Welcome to NBA Top Shot Weekly. I am Alex Kennedy, joined as always by Olive Maroney. And today we have a special guest. He is the founder of Snapback Sports. He is one of the OG Top Shot collectors. He's part of Club Top Shot. Our guest is Jack Settleman. Jack, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are we doing today, fellas? Good. We appreciate you joining us. Thanks so much. No, I appreciate you for having me. I'm excited to dive in. What do we got on tap today? On tap. I mean, we've got a lot of discussion. Obviously, because we have you on the show, I have to talk about the purchase that made you, well, I would say Top Shot famous, I guess <laughs> you could say. Um, so obviously, we want to go through that. But I think more importantly, we have to chat about kind of where Top Shot is now versus where it was maybe five, six months ago and kind of the growth. Uh, and then obviously, crack open some packs and, and see what we can get. All right, cool. I, I mean, I would love to chat about all of those good things. <laughs> So, Jack, how did you first, because, I mean, we talked about it before we started recording here. I, I know that Oliver introduced me to Top Shot. I think you played a role in Oliver figuring out about it. How did you first hear about NBA Top Shot? I feel like Oliver, Oliver, did we get into cards at, like, the same time? I feel like we yeah, did. Yeah, we were yeah. texting back and forth, like, yeah. in breaks together. We got yeah. into breaks. I don't know if yeah. you remember. No, I remember. I feel like you either have some of my cards or I have some of yours. Or we both I don't know stuff. what yeah. happened. They're, yeah. they're lost, but, which is actually hilarious because, like, Oliver and I broke physical cards together, like not together, but we would buy into breaks together and watch and like, think about it. Like it's, it's physical. So I would have to ship to him. It's tough. Like if that stuff happened on the blockchain, it's very trackable. Um, but the background into top shot was I run a huge Snapchat page, snapback sports. And so I'm on social media. NBA is a big part of the product, basketball fans, et cetera, sports cards with Oliver. And then I've been buying crypto, Bitcoin specifically for the past few years. So this was like the perfect blend of it. I actually dove into it like two times. I tried to get into it. I just couldn't understand the concept. It didn't click for me. And then a third time I went in, I was like, you know what? I'll buy, I'll buy, buy a pack. And for whatever reason, it just clicked and I started to dive in, started to really get into the Discord. And I think a lot of NFTs are built that way is by the early adopters teaching newbies like how this works and getting them excited about it. And then once I was hooked, I was hooked and it just ramped up uh, extremely fast. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I know when we were getting into cards early on, I, I specifically remember the card break that we got in on and we just made the mistake. We chose, I remember... We were picking between the Wizards and the Knicks. Yeah. And it was, you know, obviously RJ Barrett rookie year versus Rui. Rui and yeah. we were both big on Rui. And we were both big on RJ. And like a lot of people were kind of off the RJ train at that point. And uh, we opted for the Wizards. And in that break, I don't know if you remember, there was a one of one RJ Barrett Prism card. And uh, we missed out on it. But yeah, it hurt. Um, it hurt. <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that is what I remember specifically when we first got into it. But, um, Quick question for you. So you got in pretty deep and then you obviously made news by the whole LeBron purchase. Talk me through how you can convince yourself. Okay, you can convince yourself that you love Top Shot and you could like buy a pack or two or buy yeah. some things in the marketplace, whatever. Talk me into how that goes from like maybe a thousand dollars into a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. That's next so level. Yeah, so so we bought LeBron 23 cereal of his from the top dunk, which is known as the Kobe tribute. So 47,500 bucks was the purchase that price. Was what it was. And yeah. yeah, like Jan 19, I think. So funny enough, I didn't uh, buy the whole thing. And I always talk about we. So, and the plan, like a lot of people thought I was just like pumping the moment or that I did this like as a marketing scheme for Snapback because. It came right after when Rob G bought like the Mickey Mantle card and he got a ton of press for it. So people thought I was doing the same thing. And in fact, I bought the moment uh, at, with a bunch of other people. It's the only moment I own with other people, really. And a lot of them work in different places and they were like, I don't, I can't be known as like, I did this, right? Like their career, like they want it separate from this. And they're like, Jack, you already have a public facing profile. Like just go with it. Not thinking like anything would happen. And now that purchase is like tied to me and you know, every single discussion and I've become a top shot personality and all this stuff. We made club top shot because I went on Pete show and talked about it. So yeah. Um, but why did I do it? 
I think the conviction was that, you know, we're headed towards a digital age. It solved for a lot of the physical car problems from the braking to sending into PSA to the condition to uh, not knowing how scarce these cars were, or how rare they were. So Top Shot, I just really got it. And once I got it, I was like, if I'm going to go all in, like I have some Bitcoin, I might as well. And I will say I was going to buy the whole thing outright. I was going to flip. I think Bitcoin was at around 50K at that time, maybe a little less. I was like, I'll sell a Bitcoin for this. I've never sold Bitcoin before, but I think it's worth it. And then the moment was easy to pick. LeBron James, he's the, he's the cream of the crop on the platform. Special moment, like the cosmic is awesome. The hollow is cool, but like that's a random dunk. This had meaning to it. Uh, series one, of course. And, and another thing we discovered afterwards that I think plays well is like, yeah, there'll be more special moments uh, possibly with LeBron, his blocks, you know, the shot against the magic. There'll be more rare ones, uh, a platinum, a Genesis. But number 23 serial isn't guaranteed necessarily for that. Like with the Platinum Genesis, there'll always be a number one serial. And number one was on the board. We went with 23. Belief is that 23 is the jersey number. It means more. Uh, so, so picking the moment was easy. We got offered both of them, actually. Uh, we also got offered, you know, I think 23 plus a LeBron Cosmic plus a Trey Hollow for like a hundred grand. And we were like, nah, like we're just going to do this one. Probably should have, probably should have taken the whole thing, but I think everyone has buyer's remorse. Um, so we're fortunate to have made that decision. So moving forward, you have this moment, obviously, and now people know you as like, you know, you're like the poster child for that moment. <laughs> which kind of sucks and also is amazing at the same time. I think most people would love your position, but at the same time, I can understand where it gets frustrating to answer the same question over and over. Yeah. Um, it's almost like Malcolm Butler in like the Super Bowl. Like he's just going to be known <laughs> for that pick. His, you know what I mean? There's, there's yeah, many yeah. equivalents to, to things like that. But um, for you, like how many DMs and messages do you get now on a daily basis? I'm just curious on people at, like shilling you your like moments that you could purchase or the numbers that make more sense or like trying to make deals because I get enough of them. Yeah. I can imagine what somebody like you who is kind of labeled as a whale at this point. Yeah. Uh, no, like. I, I really don't get like too many. I think at the beginning, like I'd say from January to before the bear market started, like it, it was a little more. Now it's like not too common. I probably get a few a day and uh, I'm not really interested in just buying people's moments because because honestly a lot of people are just trying to do it because they don't have withdrawals they don't have these different like they they're trying to you know dump and they're like hey jack do you want my shit moment i'm like no i don't want your shit like i'm sorry you bought like that ish smith mgle like ish smith is he's a cool player but like if you don't want it i probably don't want it um so yeah i i get some but it, it's not as bad as i think you would imagine Interesting. Interesting. Go ahead. Alex. So I'm, I'm curious what for people that, cause we get lots of questions because since we are started doing the show, people are asking, why do you believe in top shot? Uh, there's still people that you see like in comments or in the chat that are like, this is a scam and are very, very against it. Now I don't necessarily understand that side of it as much. Like I get not being interested in it, but I don't understand some of the criticism of it, but for people that maybe just don't get top shot, what would be your pitch to them as a, why this is something worth investing that much money in and why this should be sustainable and could be the future of collecting? I mean, I actually dealt with a lot of this early on, uh, I would say in January and, and it would always be like, well, why should I invest in this or and so like at the beginning you're trying to teach people and you're trying to help people and i and like this may come off in the wrong way so i'm not intending it to be but like we don't have a duty to like tell people they should i guess where it's like if look if you don't like this investment and you're telling me it's a bad one i don't need to explain for myself now if you come and you're like well i want to learn i do want to invest in this i see the potential give me more conviction. But it's like, yeah, if you're just in it for because you want to see the numbers go up in your in your account, then yeah, maybe it's not great for you. There's no guarantees. You know, it's like, 
asking someone, you know, why should I invest in the stock market? Well, that's right. a little, it's a little easier. It's like over time, it's tended to go up. This is more speculative, but like I got over the, um, like, this is stupid. This is dumb. This is like, those are YouTube clips pretty quickly. Now the yeah. legitimate concerns, you know, it's a scam. What they're trying to say is like, I need withdrawal access. I understand the frustrations. Like I'm frustrated from time to time as well. Like there's a Oliver and I were talking. Yeah, go ahead. Now, have you have you been able to withdraw? I've seen you tweet some stuff about it. You've had success withdrawing, correct? Yeah. So I I got in early um, before and got withdrawal access pretty quickly. Uh, I've taken five bucks off the site. I actually paid twenty five dollar withdrawal fee just to show that I could withdraw. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've only taken five bucks off the site, which is all. Also, why it's funny because like a lot of these people who are you know whales, I, they have more money than me. I'm only 24 years old. Like I'm not this whiz kid, genius boy, trillionaire. Um, so my <laughs> top shot portfolio is like way more. I mean, it, it's an unhealthy percentage of of my net worth. You know, and like when I so when people are like, oh, you got so rich off, I'm like, I'm. I have only made $5. Well, I've, I've actually, I'm down X amount where I've invested. Yeah. I've invested thousands of dollars yeah. in this. Um, so, so like if I were to talk to financial advisor, they would 1000% be like, you need to sell the LeBron cosmic, take 250 grand off the table today. Like no questions asked, right? Like that would be the right move. And like, I've thought about it because it's like, yeah, like if you take a step back, the returns in that short of a period of time are stupid, but like, I can't, like, I just think it's only going to continue improving. So I guess that could be, you know, it just shows my conviction in it. And if people uh, want to see conviction, then, then there's a literal example of some. Yeah. It, I'm curious because I, when I was talking to Alex about this too, I'm like, I only put in what I'm comfortable with losing because it's essentially a gamble. Like yeah. whether you want to talk about it like that or not, you can call it an investment. You can call it whatever you want. But I, I see it very similar to like Bitcoin six, seven years ago when people were like kind of go buy Bitcoin, go buy Bitcoin. And it's like, you know, you don't really understand it. If you don't understand it or get it, you know, certainly you should do your own research. But yeah. um, and I think when I actually asked you about Top Shot initially, I was like, I can't get over the physical aspect. And I remember the response you gave me. You're like, well, if you can't get over that, then didn't forget about it. Like, and then uh, as the as I did more research, as I started looking into it more, I said, okay, I can see where I could use this. And I put in a couple hundred bucks, I think, to like initially start it. Yeah. And um, so I'm curious, like, for your perspective, like, we had talked about different investment ideas and like concepts early, like I think it was like early January ish, like right after you bought that LeBron, I sent you over like a Giannis and a Luca and some other moments. And I was like, what do you think is a good buy? And like, now that the market's kind like, it's not settling by any means. There's I think I, it, is, a bunch. it is in comparison to where it was going. Like, I yeah. think it's found it's, I think some moments have found their pricing now, like you were just saying, then when you release new moments, does that affect those prices? Sure. But I think generally, like some moments have started to find their pricing for now. That could mean yeah. a week. That could mean, you know, a month. Who knows? There, there's a lot of variable there, too. I mean, yeah. you could say like the Edwards has the Edwards dunk has found its price around that twenty five hundred dollar range. Now, sure. could it be three thirty five hundred when he wins rookie of the year? Could it be two thousand if he doesn't win it? Sure. Right. But like we don't think it's going below, you know, that sort of figure. And we don't think it's going above like some crazy numbers. So um aldridge was kind of a good example of that uh, today when he announced his retirement obviously yeah. um i don't know yeah, if you and I'm curious if, if it'll yeah I, I put a tweet out um it's actually really funny so i know we're gonna talk about the van vliet that sold for like 140k but let me see if i can find uh i think it was an aldridge i should be able to pull it up um and then hopefully share my screen so the irony behind all of this is the highest Let's see. Do they still do highest sales on here? Or yeah, no? thirteen yeah. grand, I think, was today. Yeah, yeah, but do they do like second Brief or third? Moment. All, oh. all I, yeah, it looks like they changed it. Um, it so, did. so up until today, I think I had the highest buy on the Lamarcus Aldridge base moment debut, like his first one, because in back in the old days, which was like January, we used to <laughs> we used to buy 
and trade like through Dapper. Yeah. Or not, like through the marketplace. So like when, when that new site came out that you could see like people who were bad actors and stuff yeah. like that. I don't even know what it's called. But I kept getting pinged about the, like a Van Vliet that I ended up buying while the marketplace was down in exchange for it quickly when they released over All Star and this Aldridge moment. So up until today, I think I had the number one sale on an Aldridge that was like 1300 cereal out of 4K. But yeah, so this Van Vliet that sold, I actually, it's, I have to keep it private, but I do know it's part of a trade. The person who did it, they reached out to me and was like, hey, um, I can't say what moment it is yet. I think he's going to announce it and everything. But uh, yeah, so he bought a moment. Um, but so essentially, like either he paid 140K plus moments mm -hmm. or he just paid 140K, but he negotiated that price down. And if he listed the LeBron from the top dunk for 140K, there are no someone could buy it right or or like they would you, you know one of these sites that has alerts could ping it and it could get bought immediately so that's just a way of doing it there's not necessarily a bad actor now i've seen like john wall cool cat serial 1800 go for 20k and it's like yeah that raise it like could that be money laundering could that be there, yeah, there's there's absolutely be. concerns yeah. but for the 140k one it's like no shit people are gonna see that you yeah know, you put a target on your back obviously yeah. so, and, so and, and, everyone i've seen like people yeah. jump to like money laundering immediately so i'm right. glad you explained you know there's also trades and other things that are happening as well because yeah i think people see that and they're just super confused so that's a good right. explanation yeah and and like look is there's there there's probably money laundering there's probably bad actors but like for 140k, you know that people are gonna see that. You know, like yeah. that's not the you can't be that dumb to do that. So yeah, <laughs> I know that's part of a trade. I'm not sure when that's announcing, but uh, yeah, I used to be a. Tra I mean, I traded. The funniest part is, and like I've seen some some OG collectors upset about is it, like this Jacobs Office Hours notes, which he then I think corrected. But um, I don't think people understand early days not only was trading huge and like doing stuff like that yep. it was encouraged, encouraged. By yeah like, like uzman like middleman like they had a they had a they had a discord chat with yeah. the with the yeah. thing so you would literally jump in there and you'd have the middleman come in to like facilitate yeah. a deal so i would send off market Yep. And then, and then you would send to Usman. He would send me the moment. Um, I got my cosmic and one of my LeBron dunks for, like from Usman. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so I think you know, don't you don't want to upset there. It's just tough on a lot of people. Look, there there's some things they haven't done well. There's some there's a bunch of stuff they've done great. We gotta we gotta be critical of them because I've seen companies be have a head start like this, have all the money in the world, have all the momentum, and you make bad decisions and. It's like you could mess this up and no one wants to see that. So I think being critical is absolutely a fine thing. Screaming into an abyss, hey, this is a scam, money launder, all that stuff. Like, yeah, I don't pay attention to that. But the the true concerns I, I get and I listen to. Right. So let's talk about those because I'm curious. Well, first of all, I think you're right of you know what you said. I, I know one thing they talked about adding at some point in the near future is like an offer button. So rather than having to list something and then, you know, like you said, it gets sniped, you can just yeah. accept an offer that someone sends you for the moment. So I think that could be good too. But so what are some of your concerns, especially someone that has this much money invested in this? You know, your account valuation is like over a million. You obviously pay a ton for the LeBron moment. So that has to be scary. And of course, you're paying close attention to the business and how they're running things. What are, you mentioned some concerns. What are some of those concerns that you have? And That's I will it. say, I will always preface yeah. by saying they are in beta. We have to stress that. That's something I yeah. say often. They're in beta. They, you know, they had all this overnight success, but what are some of those things that maybe you are concerned about? Huh. I would say my biggest concern is, is what I just touched on, which is like just making the right decisions. And, and I know that's like not a specific concern because I really like, I think they'll figure out all the little stuff withdrawals. I'm not worried about in the slightest. They just got $300 million. Like they have money, you know, they have liquidity. They just have to go through these serious processes. So I'm not worried about withdrawals. Um, I'm not really worried about them dumping too many moments. in. I know a lot of people are, but the card market's the same way. You know, there's a lot of worthless shit uh, in the card market. Uh, I, I'm worried that utility isn't as soon as I think it could be potentially priced in to be. 
Like we're talking, go to an NBA game, get a moment from the game, get rewarded for doing that, play the video game, do hardcore, do all these things. And I'm just worried that like people think that's going to cut. That takes a lot of time to build out a really good video game uh, when the site stability is, you know, a shaky from from time to time to trust that we're going to be able to build a video game and have all these cool features. So um, I just don't think I think the timeline is really short. People just expect the prices to bounce back. I don't think that's going to be happening. Um but overall, I mean, I, I still think the product is going to be extremely successful. I'm pretty excited if they end up booking, you know, the UFC happen. But like if they got NFL or MLB, people think that dips this. I think it just brings more people into the Dapper universe as a whole. Yeah. So uh, concerns is just like my like I said, my concern is that they don't make the right decisions. The upside, though, is that they have a ton of money a ton of really good investors and a ton of really smart people. So it's like make the right decisions and this thing should, should pan out. Definitely. Yeah. No, I completely agree. I think what's interesting, you mentioned there was one that I, I wanted to kind of butt in and, and just ask a little bit deeper. And then we can obviously get into, yeah. you know, some of the moments and, and open in a pack or two or whatever. But um, you say the card market, you know, obviously they print things like mad. We know this. Yeah. However, there isn't really a way to know how many are actually like, yes you could do the math and stuff but it's not really publicly out there whereas yeah. with this top shot it's very transparent it's uh, it's almost so much transparent that you do know how many are available and what is and what isn't valuable and all that stuff and so i i while i agree that that is um like not much of a concern on your end in terms of like overprinting i do think that there is like this fine line between like making moments less valuable by putting too many of one thing in, in, in like if we have uh, 500 LeBron dunks. Yeah. Yeah. It, at some point, like if I'm just like a regular, like, you know, let's say I'm a flipper, like some of the people that don't like flippers or whatever, yeah. you're just going to look at live token.co or one of these websites. And you're just going to like, wait for that LeBron dunk to, hit the snipe and then you're going to buy it. And like yeah. that becomes kind of a repetitive thing where, you know, you can buy for 15, 20, 30, $40 less than whatever the ask is. And slowly but surely, I, it, it looks like I've seen over time that the, the values do go down because of that. And I don't know what your opinion is of it, but like, do you think there, that there should be some consideration to how many moments are being released of specific players and like what moments are being released? Because it does feel like at times, uh, there are many, many, like Giannis. Everyone says they've done Giannis dirty because he has like, what, 50 moments or whatever yeah. on the site. It's really difficult to just, like, I sent you like three Giannis's and I'm like, what? Like, they're all Giannis dunks. He does yeah. zero step on one of them. One's over Luca. Like, how do I even, like, and I guess it's my own determining factor of like what I determine as valuable. Um, and at the end of the day, it is what you value. I, I hope that people understand that. But, it is difficult to discern like what is and isn't going to potentially go up or down or just something that long-term is going to be viable. Yeah. So I, I'll give you like a three prong response. Number one, it's, it's why I haven't been buying because I want to buy a manual quickly at this price, but if a quickly hollow or an MGLE or anything more scarce comes out, right, that'll kill my value. So what that sets up is like, uh, they need to be able to put out a blueprint for the year, similar to card market. You know, when NBA hoops and then Prism and Select and right, and and I the excuse for them is totally valid. It was like year one and a half, and who would have thunk in January or December when I got in that the rising stars rosters would be announced through the site, right? Like, so they can't even create these blueprints you know, when it comes to, to looking out yet, because it is so early. So what they need is they do need to create that longevity and, and have a plan for the year. When it comes to too many moments, I think, yes, I love the scarcity. I think that's what made it great, right? But then we hear, we, we have hundreds of thousands of people coming in. And so now you've got 35K uh, CC, right? Or And it feels like a ton. But like if they're if they really do plan on running commercials and building a video game and five to 10 million people a uh, hundred years from now are on the platform, 35K is not a lot. 7,500 is not a lot. 4,000 is hyper scarce. And I think that's what people forget is like, 
yet they can be dynamic in releasing moments now. But if if Roham's serious and he wants to build a product that lasts for 100 years, he needs to be thinking, what do we look like in 100 years? So when we come back to Series 2 and whatever, Denny is some stud and his moments to 4,000 are all 100K plus, then his 35Ks are acquirable and you can buy a rookie car for, from his. So. Sure. So I think like that's the thing is people always look back instead of forward on this and the concerns there. Yeah. Does it kill buyer confidence? Absolutely. Like I can't deny that. That's why I'm not buying anything series two right now, because like if I buy it quickly and then they release quickly MGLE tomorrow, everyone's selling that and going to get the next hot thing. So that's why I tend to stay season series one right now, because I know, right? Like that series is done. There's no more coming out. Um, even though like Genesis platinum, is coming out and that will kind of change stuff. So yeah, I think they need to get to a point where they can release what's coming out in the next 12 months. But at this point, it would be dumb for them to lock into that plan sure. because if the NBA comes and says, we want, right, right? Like LeBron hits a buzzer beater in the finals. You're not going to have that on the site. You know, if, if that wasn't in the original plan or they say, we, we're only going to do three moments from the finals per player, or one moment, and LeBron has a block and a shot, right? So um, it's tough to kind of create that blueprint right now. But, yeah, one day they need to, at least in my opinion, get to that. That's a great suggestion. For sure. So we have uh, some packs to open. We're each going to open up a pack, and we have a pack to give away. Uh, every week we give away a pack to someone that enters on basketballnews.com slash top shot. So make sure you guys go there. We have – multiple packs you know to give away in future weeks as well so we're going to pick one of the winners today and then yeah make sure you guys go to basketballnews.com slash top shot and you'll be entered for future giveaways and it's super easy you basically just have to like follow us on twitter and uh follow us you know subscribe to our youtube and you're set so very simple so definitely check out basketballnews.com slash top shot oliver do you want to go ahead and open your pack for actually let's, let's start with jack what's let's, a jack yes, let's do it. Uh, yeah let me share your let me screen share my screen you. Uh, all right, Jack saved we... some packs, huh? You you saved some, right? I have. I have. Yeah, Actually, I don't know if I shared my audio. Hold on, let me try that again. You don't okay. need to share it. We don't. It's not a big. No deal. audio. All right. We'll just. No all right. We'll open up a uh, Cool Cats Drop Three. Love this it. is this is the one pack I have that's still. Big oh time. man. Oh well, yeah. the tip off the tip off could be good depending on the numbering you get. Yeah. Um, no. We we open. I mean, we're giving away. That's what. The majority of the value in my giveaway going on right now is is this tip off. But let's look at this uh, cool cat. Can, right. How can people enter your giveaway? Just go to my Twitter, Jay Settlement twenty three, or no, it's Jack Settlement. That's the at right here or wherever it is. Um, it used to be Jay Settlement twenty three. Uh, yeah, it's it's pinned. It's just like retweet and follow some peeps. So all right, cool cats drop three. The music is good, but I'm muted in my own ears. All right, let's see. Does it not? Are the cool cat's not blue. No, oh, yeah, they no. don't. I guess not. Interesting. All right, let's see what we can get. Ooh, 702. Chris Man, Tops. Right, that goes in the trash. Not even going to watch <laughs> that. Oh, that's, that's my cool cat. All right, oh, I, I take it back. I will be selling that. It's the only <laughs> thing I'll sell. How do you exactly. really feel? <laughs> the numberings are pretty good on these though right yeah that's that's top 10 percent. that's pretty yeah. solid uh let's see what we got what, here. what's your deal with serial numbers I'm oh curious. my god what is going <laughs> on right oh, now this is amazing it's like it feels like we planned this nick's fan getting planned. tortured yeah, yeah. Literally. <laughs> um and i hope you Oh, that's another good. Oh, oh. Okay. Hey, right, right. that's my guy. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. You were always buying the Pelicans in the break. <laughs> I think I bought like 40 or 50 breaks in a row of the Pelicans. So yeah. I got a yeah. little crazy. Which is, them. by the way, for those listening who don't know card breaks, that's no Zion. That's just. No, uh, no, I'm. Yeah. yeah. No Zion at all. Zion was separate from the break. So. Oh, wow. All right. Here we go. Last moment. Oh, another good cereal. Drew Hot. Wow. Those. Nice euro. Uh, yeah, those are those are some pretty sick cereals, actually. Top ten percent, top ten percent. Uh, a Very solid. Number. Yeah, uh, except for we'll we'll take care of those after this. <laughs> What's your opinion on cereals? What's your opinion on cereals? Because yeah, so I think a lot of people. I what I what I'm really curious on is like the top ten percent. Yeah. 
I have a hard time valuing the top 10% over the top 50% over the top 80%. In my opinion, like the only ones that, and, and this is my opinion. And that's why I tell Alex all the time, like why I like top shot is everybody has like their different way of collecting. Yeah. Whereas with car the card market's pretty much already structured. Like if you don't have a Jersey number cereal, it doesn't really matter what cereal you have. Right. Like, nobody right. seems to really care. But with this, it seems like there are people who are like, oh, I'd rather have a top 1,000 or three digits instead of four digits. Or It's, it's kind of like grading to a degree. Like people just view, yeah, the higher number is more important. And so like for me, I mean, it's going to sound annoying to a lot of people, which we get this feedback a lot. But like when I was buying Cosmics, when they were, you know, 500 bucks and I would pay an extra 200, right, to get into the top 10 because I thought like, I don't know, it just felt more like a yeah. higher grade. Um, right now, I'll, the advice I'll give is like, if you're trying to flip or if you're trying to like be very careful, just buy the lowest ask because that's yeah. going to be the one that you can sell. And so like with all the quicklies I'm buying, which are not necessarily flipping, but like I'm either going to go into the top 10 and really splurge or i'm just gonna buy what's forget available. about it yeah yeah but, but if you are diligent like you can let's say lowest ass on quickly is 250 if you get into the top 300 for you know 280 and there'll be those snipes available that to me is worth it just for 30 extra bucks which is like 10 percent to jump up just because I, I mean but that's a personal thing like you said oliver it's like i prefer i yeah. think the lower cereals just look better um, but it is really just a personal thing. I made my first purchase of a serial number that was not like a super low tier serial number that I felt like is actually like somehow meaningful. And I yeah. just like, I convinced myself that it was meaningful. Like I really have no idea if it will ever sell or if it will ever yeah. have any meaning, but what like, I don't, did you see yeah, the, well, did you see the Trey Young to 35,000, the Kobe tribute? Yeah. The, the yeah. pseudo Kobe. I mean, I don't want to sound rude about it, but it's not, it's not LeBron's dunk. Yeah. But like, Trey at the end gives the 24 and everything. So I, I there was no 24. There was no 24, 24. There was no eights. There was like, there's a lot of stuff that wasn't there at the time. And obviously some of this is still in packs. So I opted to get 408 and there wasn't 424. And my whole pot was like, my, my whole point was, um, four, not the number four, four, oh, eight, like yeah, four. four Kobe. Kobe. Yeah. 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 So makes sense. I got you. first time I've ever like made some like ridiculous like <laughs> serial call. But, um, <laughs> uh, anyways, I was very proud of myself for, for, for becoming a serial member. Okay. All right. Um, Oliver, open your pack. I have, I, we can kind of sure. keep, questions, keep talking, but so go ahead and we'll share your screen. We'll get yours up here and you'll start opening. But while we do that, Jack, I'm curious. I hadn't. I was talking to an NBA agent about this, and they asked a really good question. And we kind of talked about it on here before, but I'm curious to get your thoughts. They basically said, "Do you think, like, unlike trading cards, where you know the mint condition cards are super valuable, and the others, you know, someone could have had their dog eat it, someone could have had it just lying around in the closet for years, and whereas with Top Shot, everything's always going to be in mint condition. Could that actually?" I know we tend to talk about Top Shot, the fact that things are in condition and you don't have to worry about like physical damage to it being like a positive. Could you actually see that being tougher? Because part of the thing with like, you know, mint trading cards is that they're so rare. Whereas, you know, 20 years from now, all the LeBrons are going to be mint because of just the nature of what this is. Do you think that could actually be like a negative that we don't have certain cards that get worn out over time and increase the value of the ones that are mint? Like, I, I, I'm, I hope I'm yeah. not correctly, but you no, know no. No, no, I, your, your question makes a lot of sense. And I think w number one, it's exactly what we were talking about, which is like, I think serial numbers could become that kind of grading system, which says, okay, this is more mint. It was minted first. It's closer. It's more appealing, right? So that's one. Two, though, is uh, what if Top Shot lets you start burning moments in order to move up in a legendary pack drop or to do a trade or you go to the next game, but you have to burn all the Knicks starters for the Knights to like get in for free. Um, so then you start to see a little deflationary on the back end and the same way, you know, your, your yeah. card was shoot up by your dog. Now it's like people with the optionality to, to burn moments and things get more scarce. That's where, you know, that if you want to make a draw between the two, that becomes really interesting. Hmm. I like that. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't think about it that way. That makes sense. Yeah. Intriguing. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a good thought. And I know I bought up a few of the Western Conference Finals moments knowing that they were going to be burned. So that yeah. was part of my like, once again, it goes back to everybody has their own like strategy, but 
that that was to me an interesting one. So yeah. let's uh, whenever, pop these open. Yeah, as you open this, whenever we had Mark Cuban on, his strategy was going after bubble moments because he's like, look, years from now, people like kids are going to be like, what's happening? Why are there no fans there? And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, that was the weird season when there was a pandemic and there was a, we were all in the bubble. Like, I think yeah. that's a pretty interesting. And that's the fact that they're mostly series one, too, helps. Yes, I wish I had bought the LeBron finals dunk legendary one. That's like the one biggest regret by far. Uh, the, those sets didn't get looked at and they still don't really like so fresh and all that stuff like just doesn't get the love that it really should. So when I sold a LeBron base, I actually took some of those funds and bought a LeBron. I saw that. It's the LeBron to 750. It's still a finals dunk, but it's not like the legendary legend. I mean, that one goes for like 90 K. Looking back 20 years in the bubble, LeBron's first LA championship, it's a ridiculous moment. So, uh, yeah, I totally agree. The bubble stuff is going to be crazy. For sure. All right, we've got Isaiah Roby. What else we got here? Kawhi three pointer. Nice. 2000. Nice. Well, not, not striking gold on the cereals yet, but read off the cereals. Because, by the way, 10,739. Uh, 10, Mini plug, you can now listen to this show on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Ooh. Oh, there you go. Trying to there help the audio listeners a bit here. But uh, yeah, awesome. So Kawhi. Last Kawhi and then Isaiah Roby, 11,429. So nothing crazy right now. All right. Last one. Can I get a rookie? Oh, Ben Simmons. 10,390 out of 15,000. Against the Knicks. A... I swear to God, they have more moments against Ooh, the Knicks. I actually kind of like this moment. I, I like yeah, the put by nice dunk. dunk. Yeah. yeah, not bad. Jack, how are you feeling about your Knicks this year? I mean, how, how else could you feel? We feel great right now. Are you yeah. kidding me? I mean, four in a row, first four-game win streak all season. Uh, the boys are playing tough. Feels like uh, – I don't want to get out of hand here, out of pocket, but Clippers 2018, they, like, were the tough, gritty guys. They had a lot of young oh, talent. I see what you're doing here. Had free agency space. And yeah. they, you know what they did? They won like one or two games against that Warriors team. And people were like, oh, that's interesting. Paul George and Kawhi Leonard later, they were title favorites last year. Obviously, it didn't work out. Um, and the free agent market's kind of been uh, cut off a little um, after, you know, Giannis resigned and everything. But, you know, max space isn't the worst thing in the world. RJ's playing great. Randall's out of this world uh rj yeah yeah rj's been great yeah. um well i think we like, both called that one i think we both called that one yeah <laughs> rj's been rj's been fantastic actually mo hamilton at basketball news he just wrote a recent uh, recently wrote like a great article about how we need to talk more about rj's improvement because he's been phenomenal it doesn't seem to be getting the attention i know like he was left off of espn's 25 under 25 list like they sleep they sleep it's okay <laughs> yeah he's, it's incredible. Okay. he's incredible but yeah, it does remind me of like Brooklyn and the Clippers. Both of these teams had that same like, hey, we're the gritty team and we, we're in a big market. We're going to have cap space. And then if you just, you know, play a little bit of expectations, that gets stars attention. So exactly. that's a great comparison. If, if like Brooklyn that. and the Clippers can get people, then you know damn well the Knicks should be able to get people with a few wins. I like it. All right, see what we got here. And then remember, we are still doing our giveaway. As I mentioned, every week we give away a pack. Go enter at basketballnews.com slash top shot, and then we'll jump to that next here in a second. Um, so let's pull a little mellow ball. I mean, that's yeah, really what we're looking for in these ones, right? Ben right. Simmons again. Simmons again. Same thousand. That's about the same serial number. Or same, yeah. same range, too. 10,323 out of 15,000. Let's see if I get uh, – Isaiah Roby and Kawhi. <laughs> what is your opinion on the Jack? What is your opinion on the hollow drops and like restricting certain people out of it? And do you agree or disagree with that concept? And then would you be stricter or like, like what is your concept behind it? Because I'm, I'm on the fence. I really don't know what, what like makes sense and what doesn't. I do get though that like there are people that got in in February, right? that bought a lot, that spent a lot of money, that did a lot of things, and they feel like they were quote unquote burned or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. You know, partly it's their fault. But um, do you think that there should be some sort of cap or restriction on like specific packs? And if so, what would those restrictions be or what would that look like for you? Yeah, it's a good question. I would say, I mean, I don't know the answer, but I will say I'll share what I saw. And I thought the sentiment online was like it it was decent. Like I didn't see a ton of people like losing their minds, which I thought was a good sign. 
uh, overall. So I think that's a positive. It's going to be fluid. I think they're going to adjust based off the feedback they get. Um, Yeah, I don't really have a side when it comes to this. Obviously, you know, it's easy for me to say because I'm going to be in every drop because I was in early. Uh, or at least I, maybe I won't because, I, like I said, I haven't bought 10 moments over the last week or so. So if they if they made that, you know, part of it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of indifferent to it. I thought the community was pretty satisfied with it, which I found surprising, which I also think is kind of telling. Like maybe there are only 80,000 or 100,000 true, true collectors right now, which would still be a shit ton of people. Uh, I think people forget that. So. Yeah, I don't know what it said, but I didn't see a lot of negative sentiment, which I thought was great. So real quick, uh, as I mentioned, Ben Simmons, 10,323 out of 15,000. Stanley Johnson, 11,823 out of 12,000. And then Chris Middleton, 7,639 out of 15,000. And then now we have our giveaway pack. Uh, the winner is Minor Johnny. So shout Ooh. out to Minor Johnny. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, shoot you an email as well so that you know you don't miss this. And we're going to see what you got here. We'll transfer the moments to you in seven days as soon as we can gift them. Uh, but yeah, thanks for entering the contest. Again, everyone that wants to enter for next week and future weeks, go to basketballnews.com slash top shot. And also go over to Jack's Twitter page. Enter his giveaway as well. Yeah, um, we, got a, we got a good giveaway popping. Yeah, we so we last week it was awesome. We gave away a LeBron moment. I think it was the same one you were just talking about. It was number two eighty three out of seven thousand five hundred. That wow. was it was exciting. Look, I by the way, Oliver, I emailed the guy and he was freaking out. So it was a it was a cool moment. I'm glad we got to give that away. And That's we're gonna awesome. do future giveaways too, like that. You know, either obviously packs every week, but then some big moments too. So definitely check out that uh, basketballnews.com slash top shot page. Uh, all, all right, right. minor Johnny, let's see what you got. Hopefully, we've had so much luck. People have been getting LeBrons left and right. When we give away packs, it's been crazy. Really? Yeah, we've had like I think three people now. Three, three weeks out of three weeks, LeBron and packs LeBron. for people. It's pretty wild. Yeah. It's seems okay. I swear it's not. <laughs> um, I mean, we gotta do better for Minor Johnny than P- Pascal Siakam. But right, good exactly. start. He's a good player. He's a good player. Twenty-five thousand seven hundred twenty-eight. The moment. Five thousand. The moment you want, Jack. If there's one moment on the site that you think is like undervalued, like underappreciated. Oh. LeBron. Hey, look at that. Another yeah. one. I'm telling there you, you go. Four, four, four. This is insane. I love that cereal too. Uh, what is it? 32,469 32, like. 32, out of 35,000. Why there do you, you love go. that cereal? I just like it. I think it looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, thought, I didn't know if there was like some numerology. 23 nah. backwards. Yeah. Nah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Hey, minor Johnny. That I can't, literally, I can't believe I've never pulled a LeBron, but doing this, I've pulled like four LeBrons that for other people. So this That's is incredible. Awesome. Again, yeah, undervalued Oliver. Uh, high price, like I've been tweeting about it. Giannis run it back has been the moment I've been wanting to yeah. buy for a while. Um, may splurge eventually, and then lower price. I would say the series one rookies are getting really interesting because the series two kind of found their pricing, but series one seemed to be lower, and some of those players are better. You know, it's like the car market, like Lamelo's. Yeah. Some rookie came out for eighteen hundred and Zion's at six fifty. Zion's playing it as an all star, and Lamelo's yeah. sitting on the bench. So I think like people get caught, caught up in the hype all the time, and you'll see that drop off between year two uh, for them. So I would say go back to series one because all that stuff's locked in. Plus, it's series one, and a lot of those and that draft class is is looking awesome right now. Yeah, awesome. So, yeah, so we will send the, uh, these moments to you, Minor Johnny. You got LeBron, you got Pascal, you got DeLon Wright. That's number 29,684 out of 35,000. So, uh, congrats, man. That's pretty awesome. Uh, we've had so much luck with these uh, <laughs> with, with these packs that we're giving away. And, again, if you guys want to enter future pack giveaways, go to basketball.com slash top shot. Jack, we appreciate you doing this, man. Thank you so much for your time. This is a lot of fun. Thank you guys for having me. This was awesome. Uh, I'm going to hop in the next giveaway, if that's allowed. Hopefully, pull me a LeBron as well. Absolutely. You are more than welcome. And if, if, in fact, if you win, we'll bring you back on the show to open okay. back here with us. All right. That works. That works. Thanks, fellas. Have a good All right. One. See ya. Thanks so much. Take care. And as I mentioned before, basketballnews.com slash top shot if you want in on those giveaways. And until next Thursday, thanks for watching.